Hello and welcome to the Walk and Love Podcast. I'm TJ. And I'm Brooke. And today we're going to talk about something that you're going to talk about. Yeah, I'm thrown off that we're recording the intro. We're going to talk about some things <laughs> yeah. that you've heard recently. Sure, yeah. yeah. That yeah. you also think other people should hear. Yeah, love that. Thank you for listening. Thank you for making us a part of your week. The Walk and Love Podcast is a place where we laugh and sometimes cry as we try to find language to live a joy-filled life or Whoa. full life. I, both good. Both good. Both. I think some some curmudgeons. Some curmudgeons. Okay. We're going right hot, after. Yeah. Have a hot. Uh, if you like your listening to language, if you're living, you're in the right place. If you li- like, like, <laughs> I forgot to do my part. I. You some just people went straight are like, to curmudgeon. Well, life's not all about joy. Like they think that when we state that, or at least that's my fear or thought process someone would write a book (laughs) about the seasons i just feel like i i've literally heard people say it like well i don't live my life chasing joy and i'm like okay one i think maybe you're misunderstanding joy and happiness true like pleasure joy and pleasure yes like or just if you have a hot take about the word joy true joy and that that not being something we can pursue right I just, I think you're maybe missing the point a little bit or you don't have the whole picture because right. which is why we often say a full hearted or full or whole yeah. heart or something yeah. like that. Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. And so right. our joy is not coming from external pleasure, right? but internal sanctification through the Holy Spirit. Right. Thanks for listening. All right. Love you guys. <laughs> Money. Okay, Brooke. Yeah. Last week we did a Mount Rushmore. And I had said, as I was putting it up, I said, wow, the votes are like, it was interesting. As I look past it over the previous votes, it was like, oh, yeah, they are all like 60, 40, 40, 60, going back and forth. There was yeah. no blowout, yeah. but there was also no like 49% to 50%. Right. I got blown out last week. Yeah. Like it kind of embarrassed. Mm. So that's okay. I am fine with that. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, Today is my day of redemption. And I can't remember who has first pick. I think it's me. Oh, yeah. Because I think you Because I picked, picked Jill Taylor yeah. first last week. Yeah. I think that won it for won. you. I think that won it for you. Yeah. And so I think my first pick this week is going to win it for me. Okay. Okay. I'm confident. Right. I feel good. Okay. Here's your paper so you can write them down so we don't forget. Yep. Uh, we're not sure how long this episode is going to be because Daisy's... Still awake. Still awake. And we try to record during her nap. And she's been a little... She's been a little iffy with her naps. Yeah. They're, they're a little hit and miss the last few days. Okay, um, okay so today, Mount Rushmore. Rushmore, yeah. Rushmore, caca! Of movie villains. Okay. And there is only one choice to pick first. When you got the first pick in the draft of movie villains, you got to go with the all-time great, the one that people think of when they think villain. I'm talking about my boy, Darth Vader. It's a solid choice. So it's, so it's solid. It is. And it's going to be hard to beat, but you know, if anybody can do it, Brooke. Yeah. So I'm going to go Voldemort. Solid choice. Classic Voldy. Um, he, who must not be named. That's true. You know, you can't even say his name. Um, oh man. Okay. I am going to, I'm going to go, there's two that I'm between. I know that you want one of them. So I'm trying to. Okay. Be courteous to you and your choices. I'm going to go with, because it was like an era of movies, mm-hmm. like he he ex, he was a villain for like a second in his first appearance. Oh, I know exactly and then, what you mean. And so like there was a lot of buildup to him yeah. as a villain. That's who Taylor had the giant reaction yes. over, right? Yeah. So <laughs> and we were like, wait, what's going on? Yeah. And he's like... Actually, none of that matters. <laughs> yeah. So my second pick is Thanos because okay. of how expansive they made that universe. But here's the story. We went to see whatever movie he shows up first in. I think it's, it's the long I think it's the first Avengers because it's like he's up in space and like it's like a post credit scene. Yeah, post credit right? scene. We're sitting next to your brother, Taylor, mm-hmm. and he audibly gasps when he shows up. And I didn't grow up reading comics. Me neither. I don't know Bro- who this character so, is. I know it's a clue towards something that's So we're to like, come. oh, okay. You what know, is, what yeah. does it mean? Whoa, that's cool. I mean, like, and, and so then we get in the car and he's sitting in the back. I think we're in your Honda Civic. We were. I can picture Yeah, it. and he's like, yeah, we're like, we'll fill us in. Like, why does this person matter? 
Okay, so, so he starts telling this long story, and then he goes, "It's so long that like I know that we left the movie theater parking lot, and we made it all the way over to Fruitville Pike. Yeah, like past Sheets, past your parents' house, <laughs> all the way over there until he says this line. But none, but none of, of that matters. <laughs> and then continues to fill us in on the rest. And I say that to this day. Uh, if someone's description is too long, I'm like, yeah, but none of that matters. None of that matters. So where what's the point? Okay, so that's number it's two. So good. I think that I, I honestly believe that the Marvel Cinematic Universe as we know it should have ended with the snap, mm. the second snap. And then they should have waited a few years, rebooted the whole thing. Would have been Interesting. way better. So Yeah, there's some truth to that probably. Thanos. Okay, if you're going Thanos. I left I left one on the board for you. And, and the one I... Yep. The, who was actually my first thought. Literally, when you said, let's do movie villains, yep. this was the first person that came to I left mind. him on the board because out of respect to that conversation we had. But, like, I thought of this person over Darth Vader. I actually didn't think of Darth Vader at all. And and he who must not be named. <laughs> the... <laughs> Slither under the bad guy's gym. Um... <laughs> The Joker from The Dark Knight. Gosh, such a good thing. Another person I quote yeah. m- multiple times a week. And here. And here we go. I feel like so. that was one of the first movies I saw where it was like dark like that. But I thought, Night. man, that's a fantastic movie. Like yeah. I, I wasn't just like, ooh, that's spooky. Like It would probably I, end up on my Mount Rushmore movies if I had to make I one. I think so too. Yeah. I think it's a fantastic movie. Now, is it intense and dark and a little spooky? Yes. But I just think all of it was, it was just a great movie. That Solid was made. movie. Okay. Um, my third pick, this one. So I'm, I'm, I've got so many in my head. Yeah. This is a, this is a good category. Okay. Um, my third pick is kind of just going after a fan base. Oh. Which I think is smart. Okay. But it also That's what I a, did with it's Jill. a fan base that I'm a part of. Okay. I have, but he's I have not a guess. really like Boogity Boogity. Yeah, like you know, like Heath Ledger as Joker is like such an iconic like he plays that role so iconically that you remember yes, it. Yes, which is what makes it so great. So I'm on the fan I, I want to pick Sauron from the Lord of the Rings trilogy. I mean but he's not really like it's, they would have just made it right across all those fields. That's true. Without so I'm him. gonna pick Sauron. S A S I. Wow. S O A. Jeremy Pryor would be so Sauron. disappointed. Disappointed in you right now. So, I'm so sorry, Jeremy. <laughs> I don't think you listen. But if this is your episode, I'm so sorry. So sorry. Sauron. You S- got it. I'll, I'll know what it is. <laughs> oh. Nope. How focused you are. All right, oh, your third pick, Ronin. babe. Go ahead. <laughs> Saranen. That is not what, right. <laughs> I'm like, why is my third pick Saracha sauce? Yeah, it looks like that girl, that actress, <laughs> Seorsi or short, however you say her name. Yeah, that's that one. Who's in all the movies with Timmy, Timmy Shamalamale. Okay. Um, Soren, question mark. Katie Holmes. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, uh, no. I used to be married to her. Um, <laughs> Okay, I'm going to go with. There's so, there's so many good ones. You can't, I don't think you can really go wrong. No, with. not really. Oh, gosh. Um, my brain is going a mile a minute. <laughs> really? That fast? That fast. Um, I, th- I think I might have to go with. This is a little like. It's a little more light. Okay. But great villain, Scar from Lion King. Solid choice. Again, you take Scar out. Simba lives a happy life with his dad. Exactly. His Mufasa dies of old age. Because that's what that's, or by being that's poached. the point of a good villain. <laughs> like, oh, yikes. It gets <laughs> real dark real fast in another direction. Like, you need the villain for the full juxtaposition. Like, you, there needs to be stakes against good and evil. Because yeah. that's what they do. If they don't have Absolutely. a really good villain. Most movies today are they just like. They take the villain out. And so then either there's nothing at stake and you don't really care. Or they make everybody kind of bad. To yeah. cause tension, to make you feel the thing you're supposed to feel yeah. towards the villain. And Preach. then you kind of just hate everybody. Preach, sister. And then I'm like, well, that's... Yeah. What? Yeah, modern, movies need good and evil. And modern society doesn't really have good and evil anymore. And so it's just this muddy mess of... Yeah. yeah. Well, not okay. in Scar's world. Not in Scar's world. He he took the hyenas and they ruined the Pride Land. Um, spoilers. Uh <laughs> Okay, what here's... What if we started putting actual spoiler alerts on our episodes about what it would be about? 
Like the first thing you see at the top of the show notes is just like Spoiler. all caps. Spoilers. So you click it thinking, oh gosh. And then in, and then it's like, Scar's the bad guy in line. <laughs> Okay, here's a. I'm gonna I'm gonna insert a strong feeling. Okay, into oh, Ma- into what Mount Rushmore. Disney is just they're just. I know they're just falling off the cliff. I know once great company that came up with creative ideas is now creatively bankrupt. Yeah, they. I mean. <laughs> Oh, I know where you're headed with this. You you know what you know what I'm going to talk about because like you've been asking for it. Brooke has been at the head. I, I'm at, I own the message board. <laughs> Brooke's on the message boards every day, saying, "When are we? When as a society going when? to get a live action mm. prequel to the Lion King about Mufasa? Well, when? <laughs> good news for you, it's coming. It's wow. coming and people couldn't be happier about it. So happy that Disney actually had to turn off the comments on the trailer. Ooh. <laughs> I just like you have literally billions of dollars or millions of dollars to spend on a movie. Yeah. You could hire Brandon Sanderson. You could hire Patrick Rothfuss. You could hire I Pierce like Brown. I feel like going the direction of like, let's just pick a book. Because even if you don't make it. So uh, I'll, okay. I'll tie in this okay. in. Yeah, let's go. I'm not actually going to pick this person, okay. but I said this person out loud in the car. I don't understand why pe- movie makers, unless unless there's like people who aren't willing yeah. to give up their books. I don't know. But I'm like, go the direction of a mo- of a book. There's a fan base. There's yeah. stories already written. Well, they do. Even if they change it a little bit, which is where I'm headed with The Hunger yeah. Games and President Snow. Fantastic villain. Is that your pick? No, I'm just throwing them out okay. there. Like they change some stuff, yeah. but it the the like meat of the story that still there still there well there i mean the larger issue is that political activists have wormed their way inside of corporations and so they they buy ip well, and, they and they're do. like and let's they make it. this and they ruin it and they yeah. you know put a chicken and make her gay like you know that's the vibe <laughs> the, that, the family, <laughs> that's the fan the that, family guy no that's uh south park, or south park meme, sorry. yeah um <laughs> But like, I just, I, you know, I, I tell Brooke this all the time. These are my strong feelings continued is like, I, you know, I love Brandon Sanderson as a writer. Yeah. I love Patrick Rothfuss in The Name of the Wind. I love uh, Pierce Brown and Red Rising. And there's part of me that's like, please don't. Please, please, the love. please don't make this into a movie. Yeah. At now, least not right now. At least not right now. Like, let's like give us 10 years for the pendulum to swing back to like normal filmmaking. But I'm like... <laughs> Buy the rights to Red Rising, mm-hmm. hire the director from Godzilla Minus One, mm. and you will make a billion dollars. Yeah. Like, Ooh. boom. Hey, Sharks. Billion dollar maker. New, hey, hey sharks. new segment. Or we're just called Hey Sharks. I like that Hey segment. Sharks. Buy the rights to Red Rising. Okay. Great book. Yeah. Long series. Yeah. You could do movies. You could do shows. Ooh. You could do spinoffs. You could, Whoa. oh, you could have a spinoff called The Howlers. Get out of here. here. Gosh. <laughs> Hire the director of Godzilla Minus One who made that movie for like $15 million. And he even he said, that's an exaggeration. It was probably less than that. Mm-hmm. Fantastic film. Let him create the whole universe. He yeah. can hire then directors to do the individual projects. Yeah, but smart. let him be the... Anyways, I could go on and on. The sharks love it. Are you in? Cubes? Yeah. Wonderful? Yeah. Uh, the other guys? <laughs> What's her name? There's... Sandra, oh my word, what is her Sandra name? something. No, her name's not Cassandra. Sandra. Yeah. Oh my word, I can see her face. How her, many? She has an ad on the back of a bus here. For Real, herself? B- Barbara Cochran. Barbara. Sandra was close. Oh no, I'm thinking of the other blonde girl, a little know. bit longer yeah, hair. Yeah, I don't know her name. No, the, Barbara's solid though. Yeah, Barbara might be in on that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anyways, who's okay. who's pick is it? Uh, <laughs> I said Scar. Scar, okay. So I think it's you. Yeah, it's you. Is this my third pick? This is your fourth. This you have fourth? Darth Vader, Thanos, Sauron. 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 Okay. So I'm going to go with a classic villain oh, shoot. who has a great death. Taking mine. Spoiler alert. Uh, not classic, but classic if you're my age. Oh. From a Christmas movie. Oh. I might give it away. Not who I've written. Hans on. Gruber from Die Hard. Hans Gruber. Okay. You've never seen it. No, I've and never I, seen and it. And it was a conversation about this in the car that I was like, I can't believe you still haven't seen Die Hard. We talk, I, I, and every time you say you haven't seen it, and I know you haven't seen it, I'm like it's kind referenced of... referenced so, like, I feel like it's referenced in well, all Bro- modern, like... Like Brooklyn Nine-Nine, it's, yeah. he references it all the all time. All the time. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, so book my- Eli and then Die Hard. That's all we need to watch. <laughs> my fourth choice. I'm between two. Okay. You said classic, and so I thought this is. I thought you were going to take this one. Okay. Which is the Wicked Witch of the West? Oh, from solid Oz. pick. Like in that movie solid. where she like <laughs> she's just creepy and she uh, laughs and then she melts. You might win with at that the one. End. Although I still have Darth, so you have Darth. Okay, so I'm torn between that and the iceberg and Titanic. <laughs> Talk about a villain. <laughs> they didn't see it coming. And so I feel like, <laughs> I don't know if I'm politically allowed to put that on there. So I think I'm going to land on the Wicked Witch, but let, that was let ice it cold, be babe. known <laughs> that um, that would take fifth place on my Mount Rushmore. Rex unhinged, everybody. <laughs> so, <laughs> Darth Vader, Thanos, Sauron. 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 Hans Gruber. Voldemort. Solid. That's solid. Voldemort. Joker. Solid. Those two are Scar, solid. Scar, Wicked Witch. Oh, I think you won. Dang it. I don't know. Hans Gruber might have been a bad choice. But yeah, but I don't know. Not but if you've seen it. Not if you've seen it. Okay. Okay, speaking of sharks. Vote on the Facebook page. Um, How was your week? Tell me something you did this week relating to sharks. Not real sharks. Hey, shark. That was like the cutest thing ever that you got to do. Oh, yeah. So, the <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot. So, um, the girls are in this co-op two yeah. days a week. And there's a lower elementary, which Sunny's in, upper elementary, which June's in. And then they added a middle school yeah. this is like six quarter for eight eight weeks. Well, they, they learned, they taught a business class. Mm -hmm. Entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship. And so the last day of class, they asked me and a couple other people to be sharks so they could pitch us their business right. idea. They had to pitch their business presentation, and slide so, deck and all. Uh, slide deck is oh, a sorry, loose, deck. one slide. single slide, slide okay. singular, yeah, yeah slide, okay, okay. slide card. Um, <laughs> but it was just the sweetest thing. Yeah. Like, it, you know, and like, and, and, and the guy that taught it was like, hey, like ask questions, but like know that like they didn't really, they didn't use the internet to like search anything or like, you know, like yeah. they're just making up general I business. I love it. And so it's like, hey, sharks, uh, we are asking for $20,000 or 15%. Here's our monthly budget, $200 insurance. $10,000 marketing. <laughs> <laughs> the first one was $30 for Spotify. <laughs> for Spotify. Hey, got to get that spot. That's a deductible, baby. Make sure that's in your business plan. Oh, how precious. <laughs> so sweet. <laughs> so the different businesses were, one was called Chill Vibes. I couldn't tell if they were a band or if oh. they were a production company. Maybe they, both. A little bit of both. Hybrid. So... But only performing on Maui. It's almost like they had a residency on Maui at the Mac. Oh, okay. And so, residency. <laughs> yeah. Just starting off. <laughs> yeah. And their big thing was they were they could buy a thousand flyers and hand them out. Smart. Yeah. So, is that that ten thousand dollar marketing budget? That was part of it. You're spending it on flyers. <laughs> That's smart. The second one was Robo Bros. Okay. So that one was you buy like a like they sell robots. Okay. For you to like build, okay, you like buy a kit? The, sort of. Mm. Again, I'm <laughs> I'm unsure of all Barbara the would details. Have yeah, it. yeah. <laughs> uh, and then you could buy like accessory kits, okay. Like, you know, and then put them together. And then there was part where you could code your own, but they were also like we also like need camera equipment to make YouTube videos. So they were like influencer in the mm. robot community. <laughs> With a product again, smart. Just all like, those influencers selling a product. Yes. That's where it's at. And then the one guy, the one guy that was there, was like, "Oh, so like, would they be on BattleBots, which was this show like on Comedy Central or something like yeah. years ago? Like very obscure show to to talk to say to like two twelve year olds, two 12 -year -olds and they're like, live on an island. Uh. And they're like, I've never heard of that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then the third one, which was a group of girls, which I think they were all a little older anyway as well. Yes. I They're, think some of those boys were only in sixth yeah, grade. Yeah. They did. They all did great. So precious. And uh, the third group was like custom dance shoes. Okay. But the technology, this was on carpet board level. Ooh. So you take a picture of your foot. Smart. Or you outline it on a piece of paper. Again, I right. don't know the details of the technology. They didn't get into that. And then you send it to them and they make a shoe that perfectly fits your foot for dancing. Yeah. Like ballet. Yeah. Or tap. Okay. Or, oh, you can choose. Yeah. You can choose whatever, yeah, yeah. whatever dancing. Um, 
and it's only a hundred bucks. Wow. Yeah. For a perfectly, for totally, totally perfect customized custom shoe. shoe. So I was like, how much do they cost to make? And they're like, well, $30. And I said, liar. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no way. <laughs> but keep dreaming, kid. Um, and they're also going to put bracelets in with each order to say thank so you. So sweet. So, and then, and then at the so end. So did you invest? So, so we had to write who won, like first, second, and third out of the three groups. Yeah. And then uh, the teacher gave them envelopes. It was like, we want you to know that like, we're your first investment in whatever you end up doing in your life. Oh, that's going to make me cry. Yeah. So they all got envelopes to split with a little bit of cash in them. To split. Real money in yeah, it. Yeah, real money. Oh. Yeah. Um, and then he all, and then he gave them all hundred grand bars as well. I was like, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It, oh, was, that's it was so sweet. So it was just sweet. like, what a fun thing to be a part of. And like, you know, again, like there's an element of Maui that, that, only if you've ever, if you've only ever known Maui, you wouldn't think anything of it. But if you ever lived on the mainland and then move here, mm -hmm. there is an element of some of the things that you do that are just like, this is, this feels a little bit like we traveled back in time. Yes, it does. In the best way. Not yes. in like, this is annoying and frustrating, but like th there has definitely been some innocence lost mm -hmm. in culture as technology. In the mainland, speed and hustle. Uh, speed, hustle, all that kind of stuff. Because even yeah. like we even had our end of the year party for um for the school year for the ending, school year and like everybody got to bring like you, you got to bring and set up a table to sell something there so okay. it was like so like our girls like made, a bake sale and a craft we, fair yeah our girls had keychains and rice krispie treats and cookies and cookies some kids were selling like a, he made his own italian sodas on the spot other oh kids were selling lego pieces that they had some were selling like bags they made and there was an element to it and then there was like a performance on the grass all these kids are barefoot you know <laughs> highlight is the hip hop dance happening which was amazing yeah. i don't i'm not knocking yeah. it but it is very hard to do some of the hip hop moves on a sl on sloped grass yeah and but the boys went for they it they went for it and they were as sweaty as could be and then like it so kind of ended in this like impromptu dance party yeah you know on the grass and it's just like i don't know there's an element of like freeness to maui Sweetness. yeah that uh, that some of the mainland i think would would be benefited from yeah. incorporating into yeah. their lives. Um, Sometimes it can feel like, ah, this isn't organized. If you're compare, if you yeah. compare it to something mainland that is like, man, they've got a plan and a schedule and a this and a that. Yeah. And sometimes that's fine, but yeah. But you know, like we're on this, we're in this field and, and like there are kids running around, kids running behind the stage, you know, mm -hmm. area and like no one cared, you know, yeah. this is like this really sweet, you know, so, it was, so yeah, that was really cool. Yeah. Um, outside of that, from that part of my week, my week has been very weirdly encouraged by the amount of messages I've received from last mm -hmm. week's episode. Um, you know, obviously we talked about some financial things and uh, it, it, even if you didn't message and you're just like, man, I feel like that's me. Let me just say this. We who are feeling that mm. are not alone. Yeah. Um, and so, especially to the men that listen, like you are not alone and you are not being a bad provider if your family is under financial stress. Mm. Just k k stand firm and keep the course and do what you need to do to provide for the, the family that God has given you mm. and trust in him, you know, keep, keep giving, keep tithing, doing those things. Yeah. And like, you'll see it through just like steward well, the talents he's given you mm -hmm. do not bury them. Do not abandon them, steward them well and watch them multiply. Mm. So. so good. So circling oh, back. Oh, and then I have some big news, but I'll wait till the end. Oh. So that's a... You do? Yeah, I have some big news. Big, big news. Not a clue. I don't care. No, I'm just saying big over oh, and over oh, again. Oh. Um, okay, so if you were in sixth grade, what would your slide deck presentation have been on? Okay. To the sharks. Sixth grade, let's see. Hmm. Sixth grade. Mine for sure would have been something like art or craft related. So I, if I had to guess, or I was really into like dolphins. I feel like so I... So I feel like if I had to turn it into a business at the time, maybe some sort of like art kit or craft kit. I feel like this is, this is probably true. Like I feel like I lost my identity from like six until mm. my senior year in high school. That's a long time. Yeah. I just feel like I didn't really, like I was 
you know, we moved Maybe in not fifth, lost, looking for. Looking for, which is, could exploring. Be, could yeah. be like said is the same thing. And so when but I, that's very, very normal for kids yeah, that age. And so when I think about like, what would I have given it on? Like I, it probably depended on the week or the month or the year, you know, because yeah. I think it wasn't until like I really got into music my senior year that I was like, okay, I think I kind of know who I am a little bit better. Mm -hmm. And then having a, like a radical encounter with the Lord my sophomore year of college. Right. But like all those years kind of feel like I was kind of into sports, but like also like not like, I don't know. I just kind of mm. floated around, just wanted to be cool and popular yeah. and like those, all those like weird emotions and feelings, but probably sports would have probably been the, the top one, but I wasn't like the best at them. I wasn't the worst. I was pretty good, but like, it yeah. was, you know, like, I don't know. I honestly don't know. Yeah. That's, that's like a. Well, it's kind of, I mean, not really, but you talking about yourself at that age or in that chunk of time is like that reel you just did about like, do you remember when? Oh yeah. <laughs> like you wanted to be cool or a rebel or. Here, I'll play it. I'll play it for those of you who don't have Instagram because we do have some of those. So I'm just going to play the audio. This is a reel I just made. Can't you just. High school when you wanted to be a rebel. For some of us that meant we listened to heavy music. For some of us that meant we skated. For some of us, that meant we drank at parties, and for others, it meant we were a little more scandalous in our attire. And now we are in our 30s, and realizing to be a rebel in 2024, all we have to do is follow Jesus, get married, have kids, take time to teach them, eat real food, allow the sunlight to touch our skin and our feet to touch the earth, move our bodies, lift weights, not blindly follow what politicians, celebrities, and most major corporations say, Think freely, believe in things that were common sense just a few years ago, and do all of that while not making a big fuss. Just live a simple, quiet life while loving God and family. So while you might not be as young as you once were, your music played at a more sensible volume, your outfit's much more functional than stylish, you are more rebellious than that younger version of yourself could have ever dreamed. So keep it up. Keep fighting the good fight. Keep being the modern rebel you are. The world is better for it. Mm. so good yeah so i think like so sixth good. through 12th grade even through high school or even through college was like i i think there was a desire for me to like be unique and in and, and rebellious but right. not really understanding what true rebellion was that like mm. i thought rebellion was like whatever my parents said and doing the opposite and right. like there was a much broader scope of rebellion happening and that's mm -hmm. like you know, we see the rebellion of 11 disciples after Jesus dies mm. transform all of humanity for all of time. <laughs> you know, like you think yeah. about that and you're just like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah that's cool. Uh, I want some of that now. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want the like, oh yeah, you know, like, I don't know. And so, especially I think in the modern era, there's even more of like, like when I was in, in high school, it's like, I want to be punk rock. I was in an emo well, yeah, band, like, like, you know, I had like a the... studded belt and all this kind of stuff. And it was like, <laughs> sticking it to the man. The show Jackass was super popular of like. Uh, li literally. Okay. That is the epitome of my strong feelings la last week. Yeah. Last week. Of people just doing dumb yeah. stuff. Oh, my heroes. I, okay. <laughs> we need to chat. Off in that era of just like, I want to okay. just be like a rebel and. You know, and, and I think and I think a lot of teenage, I think a lot of young men feel that. Mm. And I think church, like modern Western evangelical church is like, I don't think they uh, equip young men well to know what actually true rebellion is. Mm. That it's like, like It's like Jeremy's thing yeah. about like, we all need to be part of a conspiracy. Yes. Like, and so, you know, we like, I was just told, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah. And I wasn't given a, a, a viable alternative other than sports, but you can only play sports until you're, you know, you can't yeah. anymore, Yeah. you know, and I wasn't good enough to play in college and stuff. And so I don't know, there's a lot there to unpack, I think, but I, I've really been thinking lately and it was why I made the reel that like, man, what a, what a time to be alive and to be a modern rebel, to mm. be like a free thinker who like, you know, again, when, when every politician, every celebrity and every more major corporation are saying the same things, it's really easy to like, be like, oh, I know how to be a rebel. Right. I'm just not going to do what they say. <laughs> like, and yeah. th there's part of me, and maybe this is just like, I don't know, this, the seven, I don't know what it is in me. That's like, I like that. Mm -hmm. I like that feeling. But what's cool now is like, I've realized that like that true modern rebellion is like doing things that are God honoring mm. and, and God fearing. Yeah. And there's so much 
fullness and joy in that. And Mm. so it's been, it's been interesting kind of like mulling that over in my brain that like to be really punk rock today is like to have your own kids and to homeschool them or to like grow your own food. I was going to say grow vegetables. Yeah. Or like literally just like (laughs) not be afraid of the sun or to eat meat or like, like, you know, it doesn't take much to like be counterculture today. And I spent so many years of my young life, like trying literally everything to do that. Mm. And now it's like, well, now I'm doing it and it's, there's fullness and joy in it. Yeah. And so like compared to like angsty, you know, emo TJ, it's like, (laughs) uh, yeah, I'll choose this all day, every day. Yeah. I picked up the life giving parent out of our, like a, not bookshelf, whatever this thing is over here. Credenza. Um, (laughs) I bought this a long time ago. I just was reading their other books for a while. Um, had never actually read through the life giving parent, which is by, it's one of Sally Clarkson's books, but this is the one she wrote with her husband. Some of her other books she's written with some of her kids or just by herself. What? What I have this, I have this dumb joke that I do with Brooke and I almost just did it. Now I'm going to do it. It's anytime you like mention someone like, so I don't know where you're headed with this. So Matt and I, Matt Clark and I went to see the creator, the movie. Mm Mm-hmm. And Denzel Washington's son is the main actor. Right. And Matt's sitting next to me and he goes, that's Denzel Washington's son. I go, I go, that's Denzel Washington's son. He goes, oh, what's his name? And I go, I think it's Zendel Washington. <laughs> so any time, so you're like, it's written by Sally Clarkson and her husband, Wally Clarkson. Clarkson. <laughs> so dumb. It's so dumb. It's so dumb. But it's like anytime anybody's like married or With related. The same last name. But you can't remember the first name. You just name. barely changed their first name. Nailed it. Anyway, I picked it up, started reading, and was <laughs> just encouraged. I like highlighted a few things already about um, just the, which it just totally piggybacks off of what you were just saying of like, it doesn't take much. It can feel like a lot is on the line. Right. I, we're not like saying, oh, it's so easy. It no. doesn't take much. It's not, that's not exactly, those aren't saying the same thing. But <clears throat> when talking about, I think one of the ways you can be a rebel, if that's what we're phrasing it as. Yeah, a modern rebel. A modern rebel is to be a life-giving parent. Mm. And so a life-giving parent, um, one of our most important tasks is to help our children discover themselves in the story God is writing, to find their places in the unfolding tale of God's grand purpose and plan, and to know that we are all as a family in that story together. And so that was like kind of their definition of what what is a life-giving parent mm. when they use that phrase. Um, and then I just like, as we all, as I always ask, like, what does that look like? Like, right. if I want to be a modern rebel or if I want to be a life-giving parent, like, what does that practically look like? How do I live my life that way? <clears throat> and so I'm literally just bopping around only reading the things I highlighted. But as I scan back over them, I feel you like bop, they all... Babe. Just keep bopping. Just bibbity bop. Um, <laughs> They all all tie in together Um, is that it's, it's not just about like being, here we go. So being a life-giving parent is not about changing the culture we live in, but about being countercultural to it, Mm -hmm. what you're talking about. It's not about creating a comfortable Christian subculture insulated from the surrounding world. Rather, it's about being a let being the kind of life-giving home culture that will stand as a testimony to God's biblical design for family mm. to a lost world whose sandy foundations are washing away. Oof. And then this is like, Go ahead, Sandy. this is like Sally. Maybe well, this is I, Wally. No, I don't know. Her this husband is Sandy. Oh, see. Sandy, Sandy and, and Sally, Sally Clarkson. Clarkson. Um, and then it is not about being a political or social culture warrior, in quotes, for the family but about definitively and maybe even defiantly building a home where the living God of creation is undeniably living through the family Mm. within it. And I just was like, like they didn't rock my world. Like I've never thought of that, but it was like, man, that is put so well into words. Concisely of just like, that's what what we're trying to do. What we're trying to do. And I can sometimes use the phrase life giving, or I can be like, it's, you know, it's through rhythms and it's through this. And it's like, we're all kind of saying the same thing. Like, it's almost like you want, like, and Jeremy talks about this. And I was actually having a conversation with this about the, I was was teaching Sunday school this morning Mm. with the two people in there. That was like, you almost want to create like a family culture an identity that like people are like, wait, what? Mm. Like, you know, like uh, they, we were talking today this morning about like sleepovers and like how the, there was an older woman who has 
her grandkids are in our, in the class we were teaching. And okay. she was like, I just like, there were times where like I told my kids they couldn't sleep over mm. and like they lost friends over that. Yeah. And like, and I was like, good for you. Like, that's yeah. amazing. Like, I don't yeah. know, like a lot of people our age now are like, we just don't do sleep over. Yeah. It's a little it's more like, understood yeah. as to like, we just, we but, don't do that as a But family. like, you know, uh, I guess uh, intentional parenting are here on Maui doing a course. And yes, I got to talk Brooke to them. Yeah, Brooke and Elizabeth. Yeah. And uh, they, I guess yesterday during the, they had this big conversation about technology mm. and cell phones and stuff like that. Mm. And like, yeah. <laughs> Which will get anybody, but yeah. Yeah. yeah it, I have yeah, thoughts yeah. that I don't know if I should and, share, but um, yes. <clears throat> you know, and just like that, you're going to, you're, you're going to lose friends for your kids mm. if you have a hard and fast rule. But like, by doing that, you're sort of doing what Sally is saying. Yes. That like you want to create this like countercultural movement and identity. And and there might be times with your kids that like it is friction mm. over that. Yeah. And as long as there's like enough communication and grace and emotional mm. intelligence and forgiveness, I yeah. think five to 10 years from that friction, your kids are going to be like, wow, mom, thank you. Yes. Wow, dad, thank you. Yes. Like I know I wasn't easy. And I've said yes. that to my parents like, wow, like- there are yeah. some things that you guys fought me over that I'm really grateful that you fought fought for me over. Yeah. Because it, it could have led me down a path to some of my high school classmates who I've seen that I'm just like, ooh, that's rough. Yeah. You know, and. Yeah. And what I love about, I can use Broken Elizabeth as an example, because Elizabeth, her, like, uh, her maiden name is Comer. So she's John Mark's sister. And so what I love about their, um, like, they have a podcast with the Comer parents um, with her parents and Iman, then pop pop comer. <laughs> mm, yeah, I think that's right. Um, that's just what I call them. That's what you call them. <laughs> but yeah. I mean, that's what will, I will call them when I meet them. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, Mima, I give her a big hug. She's like, who the frig is this? <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, what I love about them and their ministry. And then what I also love about Sally is that they are already well into their grandparent era. Mm -hmm. And they, so they did all these things they're teaching about for the last 40, 50 years. Yeah. They are not, uh, they are not our yeah. age. They are not still in the thick of it. Yeah. And so that's why I love Sally stuff. And that's why I love when Diane and Mark, no, it might be Mark. Diane Hence John Mark. I don't know. Brian. Anyway, I know her, I know her <laughs> name's Diane. Um, now I'm not sure, but I'm Diane sorry. and Ryan. Stop, stop, you stop. <laughs> I don't remember, but I, that's what I love is because sometimes yeah. it does feel like when you look left and you look right and I'm like, well, I got friends who are trying to do it the same way as me, but is this going to work? Yeah. I ask myself that yeah. a lot. And that's, and that's nice. why I love them and this book and anybody who's just like, oh, we did that 30, 40 years yeah. ago and look at the fruit yeah. that's come out the other side. So and Jeremy, um, like he, he's just had his yeah, first Jeremy two too. grandkids. Yeah. Or one and a half, one, like one, 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 pregnant. I think one and two are on the way or something. I don't know. Yeah. And like, you know, it, it's so fun to be like, okay, like mm. that, that seems to be working Yes. and we're kind of, yeah. Yes. But what I, so then I skipped a few pages, like I didn't skip, I read, but if I skip a few pages to my highlights, it says, here's the reality that needs to be affirmed. A distinctively Christian home can never be defined only by what the children are doing. It must be defined by what the parents are doing. Yeah. Shot through the heart. <laughs> no to blame. But I but I love that yeah. because that actually weirdly, and I don't even know if this is the right way to phrase it, it doesn't make me feel more in control. I, because that's not really the right perspective right. to be looking at it through. But it's like, okay, like, and then it says, only you, parents alive in Christ because of the Holy Spirit within you, have the ability and the power of the Spirit to make your home a Christian home. Engagement with Christian culture does not define a Christian home. Engagement with the living Christ does. Oof. I think I'm, I think I, I think I'm proclaiming this. You know, it's real big to be like, I'm in my mom era. We saw a shirt today. In my mom, <laughs> I'm in my mom era. era. I'm in my, you know, gym fitness influencer era, right, whatever. Sourdough. I would like to proclaim that for the next 40 years of my life. Yuck, there's a bug in my coffee. Gross. I'm going to, I'm going to scoop it out. Gross. Well, you, it's like one of those little gnats. That's why we brought back video. Um, I'm in, I, I want to be in my Holy Spirit era. Oh. I want to be in that era where like Holy I am. Activate. hundred percent. Activate. hundred percent. Activate. Let's go. Um, <laughs> and I want that to be like the defining characteristic of the next 40 years of my life. That like, mm. like when my kids, when I die and, and June, Sonny and Daisy speak at my funeral and hopefully their husbands speak mm. at my funeral as well. 
and their kids, I want them to be like, man, pop, pop. <laughs> I didn't know we were calling him Big Pear. <laughs> uh, Grandpa Ding Dong, or Grandpa, oh, Grandpa Dinkle, Dinkle. <laughs> Grandpa Dinkle mm-hmm. was, was in tune with the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Like if they can say that, job well done. Yeah. Take me home, Jesus. So moving on to the next thing. You cannot put into your children's hearts what is not first in your own heart. And it will only get there through an active and purposeful relationship with God. You are the key. Mm-hmm. Truth transmission begins in your heart. Wow. So Because it's babe. just talking about all that. Like, well, how do, how do you pass a faith generationally? Yeah. Like, how do you do that? And it's not just. Here are our traditions. Here yes, are our Yes. And it was like under that, like you, you cannot just engage with the Christian culture. And, and they were saying like, well, this is like a, a hypothetical, like, well, they go to youth group and they have yeah. Christian CDs and they go like, to a Christian conference and they go to, and they're like, great, that's not bad. We're not saying don't yeah. do those things, but that is subpar. That is missing the point to you as a parent engaging with Christ in your life. Yeah. Like that is the key to trans to, to transmitting that. And, and something I'll say, and, and I'll, I'll sort of throw my dad under the bus, but also like totally tell him that he's amazing and was, is such a good dad and still is to this day. Like he yes, texted he us is. yesterday. He lie he sort of live text the podcast to us, which I, I love just it. love. It's like his version of social media. I think as a teenager during those rebellious years, mm. the only like extreme emotions I saw from my dad were anger. Like, mm. not that my dad was an angry no, guy, but like very he's cute, very calm, very, very stable guy. guy. Like, but when, but when he, there when was, there was an emotion, big emotions, was it. it was, it was anger. And so there are very few times where I can say, I saw my dad cry or I saw my dad feel mm-hmm. deep emotional things mm-hmm. until he became a grandpa. Mm. And then, and it'll make me cry thinking about it. Like I've seen my, my dad experience emotions, both through his grandchildren. I've seen him cry over his grandkids. Mm. Um, but I've also seen him like in church have much more of an emotional response outwardly that we can all see happening Yes, that didn't happen in my teenage years. And so there's an element that I wish like, while he did tell me, this is what we believe here. Like we were involved in Christian culture. There was an element that I wish there was like a more emotionally, like I, I wish I would have seen it, that it was super mm. real to him. Mm. Like the girls will some like a movie will come on or like a song will come on and you'll see all the girls. They pivot they to pivot. look at us to see if we're crying. Are you guys crying? Because they can feel that something yes. is coming. And there are times where I'm like, yes, I am. Yes. Well, you know. I know. And, and I think over like. Bluey. Yeah. Or over a worship song or over mm-hmm. like, and, and so there's an element that like, uh, again, your parent, our, we do the best we can as our parent, as parents Correct. and we don't get it all right. And so mm-hmm. there's an element of like, there's grace. Dad, don't feel like I'm throwing you under the bus. Right. I love you so much. Um, but man, as a young teenager looking to be rebellious, mm. trying to understand who I am, I'm, I'm kind of speaking to our male audience that like, allow yourself to feel the deep things of God. Yeah even somewhat visually so that your young children can understand that like, this isn't just a set That's of what's rules. That's going on inside This of isn't you. just a set of things we do. We don't just go yeah. to church because we have to. Like, this is real. And this is, this is something that I believe at a deep spiritual level that has radically transformed my life, your mom's life, our, the life of our family. And I think as a kid or as a teenager, especially kind of searching for stuff, if I saw that a little bit more frequently, mm. I don't know if I would have been as rebellious. Maybe I would have, who knows? Like we, we can't really right. go back in time and, you know, but, but there's something that has been so sweet to me as an adult to see my dad feel those things that I wish I would have had long. Like, I wish I would have well, seen I them earlier. You're literally proving or not proving, like you're adding to the truth of like, it needs to happen in us, the parents first. Yeah. Because I, again, I I don't know, like I'm, this is all like a hypothetical kind of, but I would imagine if your dad's dad had done that, like you start to go back Yeah, because my dad, yeah, my dad was raised by the silent generation. And so they didn't, didn't, yeah, they didn't have any emotion. I can feel the same way towards my, like my grandparents, my parents' parents, like, you know, my parents were, were parenting the way they were based off of how their parents did. And so that that just adds to the truth of, you know. Our, what's the phrase that our kids will not not literally end up being like us, but like your kids becoming who you are. Yeah, they become yeah. who you are becoming, yeah. and yeah. Um, and, and then, then and one a- last thing, and it's it's just to, it just d- doubles down on the same thing. The title of this chapter is called "Someone's Got to Give," meaning that like if we really want to 
give our faith generationally, like we, we, it's active. Like it does yeah. not happen by accident. Someone's got to give. And so it happens for one, like actual, the transfer of the life of God to our children does not happen just by good intent or accident. It happens for one reason only because we decide we are the people who've got to give not another person, a group or a church, not an organization, a resource or an influence, just us. Mm. We are the life givers. We are the ones who will give the life of God to our children. Oof, so good. Mm. Which was so encouraging because yeah. then I'm just like, okay, then I'm doing it right. Yeah. Like it takes some doing of the, the best pressure version off. that I can. Yeah. And I feel, I actually feel like I highlighted that and now I don't know where it is. It's, they're talking about like, um, that the goal of this book is not to overwhelm you. Um, sorry, they say it so well, I feel like I have to find it now. Sorry, I know I wasn't talking into the mic. Um, give me a second. I didn't highlight that many things. So I have to be able to find it. Um, ah. Sorry. Oh, our prayer is that rather than being overwhelmed, you will sense a new freedom by discovering a different way of life at mm. home with your children. At its core, life-giving parenting is less about what you do and more about who you are. A child of the life-giving God, a child of the living God who is connected with him and who is ready to share that life with your children so yeah. that they may know him too. So that's what I was saying, that like I feel a sense of freedom in it. Yeah. Of Or like I, I'm reminded of the freedom in that, of like that is what it takes. And I say that that's all that it takes. I don't, again, say that right, like yeah. it's easy because yeah. it's not. But like, that is what it looks like. Mm. That answers the question of like, I don't know, what does it look like to be a modern rebel? What does it look like to be a life-giving parent? Yeah. And I'm like that right yeah. there. That's so and good. then I feel like it, that provides clarity and I can actually go do that. Yeah. Thing or keep doing that thing. That's good. <laughs> and I'll link the book in the mm -hmm. show notes. Um, that's so good, Brooke. Thank yeah. you. I was just encouraged. A lot longer than we thought we'd go. I know. Daisy's still awake. Still awake, but she hasn't, she's not, she's not she crying. She doesn't seem that upset. <laughs> squirreling around. Um, okay, so the big news that I was waiting oh. till the end. I'm doing a dad's on Maui. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. This is big this news. Is big Sorry, news. I didn't know. Yeah. I wasn't tracking I'm going to do you. a dad's on I got Maui bugs in, my in October. <laughs> <laughs> in October. That's the only one. In October. Uh, the dates aren't in front of me, but they're in the show notes. It's like in the 11 teens. through 15, yeah, somewhere yeah, yeah. there. And there's only uh, nine spots total. One is already booked yep. at an early adopter yep. who I think is a fan of what I'm about to say. Ooh, even better. So the one, the only <laughs> Brad Ellis from Ellis Custom Creations will be joining us yes. for Dads on Maui. Yes. You will be my helper slash quasi co-host quasi co slash super just fun times. When oh. Brad and I get together... It's, it's going to be a I, good like, time. Yet again, I'm like, can I come? <laughs> can I be your chef? What could I do with my children for five days um, so that I so can just make food I, and laugh? I, I was stoked before, and I asked Brad early, and I was like, yeah. no pressure, but like, I'd love for you just to be here. Baby. Like, uh, you know, just love hanging with you and all this kind of stuff. And so he sent me an emoji, Maui, locked. <laughs> and so like, he's in. It's oh. going to be such a fun time. Um, it's going to be like... You know, again, similar to Moms on Maui, where it's like, it's both fun. Is it a vacation? Yes. yes. Is it a retreat? Yes. Yes. Is it a getaway? Yes. yes. Will there be teaching? Yes. yes. <laughs> is uh, it all the things? Yes. Yeah. And I'm super stoked. Uh, you know, so much of what we do is so like brook heavy. And, and like, it's just like. And, and digital. Digital, like, but like, you know, our audience is very much female, but yeah. I do get the message that like, hey, I'm one of your six guys. You know, yeah. we need all of you to We book. need all six of you to come. <laughs> So. Otherwise, it's going to be real awkward. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah. It's you and Brad. Yep. And it's in Wally October. <laughs> Old Wally. Old Pop Pop Comer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get Pop Pop Comer. That is not a. Okay. No, 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 no. He's hard mm. to get. Um, and uh, <laughs> yeah, so we're super stoked. I think it's going to be a ton of fun. Uh, so yeah, th that'll be in the show notes to uh, apply. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, there's payment plans. So like if, if, if it feels like it's a lot, we have until October to pay it. Yeah. Um, which is really cool. So we're giving you plenty of time. Moms on Maui is booked. Mm -hmm. We actually cut it down to one week. Mm -hmm. um, and so the, the week that we're doing is booked. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you if you're coming to that. Uh, you'll probably get a text from Brooke this week that yeah. says, hey, here are all Good the ladies. Text. Let's go. Let's go. I love Whenever I walk by your phone, it's like M-O-M. -M. 
one, M O M. That two, my phone and, and is and constantly blowing up yeah. with all the moms on Maui group chat, uh, which is really cool and fun to see. So that's going on. Thank you again for all the messages about last week's episode. Mm-hmm. Um, I did. Uh, a couple of you are have Michael, Uncle Michael's phone number now, which is great. <laughs> I love that. Um, and again, if you want to support Brooke and I and the podcast and what we do, uh, you can buy a t-shirt from Walk and Love. Yep. You can buy a product from Sunny Morrow. You mm-hmm. can uh, start the t-shirts help. are coming this week. Yeah, we're They're launching re- re- restocking best bestsellers. Sellers. Um, and let's give a discount code for those. Let's do. Pop- when do they come? Wednesday? They come out on Wednesday. Pop up Comer. No, no, we cannot put so many <laughs> last names. Okay, in our sorry. Code. Okay. Oh um, gosh. Okay. What about? Um, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Are you laughing? Iceberg. Yes, that's what I was gonna say. <laughs> if you're a podcast listener, the the collection <laughs> comes out on Wednesday. Um. So for 72 hours, you can use the code Iceberg. Restock <laughs> bestsellers. So really, some really cool like tie dye options. A yeah. fun. It's all things that we've sold before, but like kind of in Designs new color ways. we've sold before, but on new items. Yeah, and yeah. so they're really fun and exciting, perfect for summer. Uh, mm-hmm. So you can do that. Uh, you can come to Dad's on Maui. You can uh, buy something from Sunny Morrow, which mm-hmm. another collection is on its way. Yep. And uh, Tiny Rhythms. Uh, again, if you're a parent of young ones. We don't have Pop Pop's house. Some, sometimes, uh, sometimes between, somewhere between four and nine. That's probably like the the, yeah. the money age for it. This, Honestly, even maybe, even maybe three. I mean, yeah. Sunny was three when we. Were this little. tool that we have created has just been so radically helpful, and and there are days we don't use it, but the days that we do, are yeah. it's just so nice. It's 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 helped our kids like understand the flow of the day. It's allowed us to do things as a family that we sometimes probably would have skipped in the name that of we like say matter. Yeah, and then life happens. Oh, you, you know, don't get to it. Like, yeah. and then mm-hmm. it's really helped, uh, especially with June, who's nine, get her on board for some chores yeah. like. Yeah. You know, like there is some weird thing that happens in her brain when she checks those things off that like makes Science. her feel good. Science. Yeah. So I'm if you want to support Science. the podcast, you can do that. Thank you guys for listening and for making us part of your week, week after week. Mm-hmm. Please send the podcast to a friend um, yeah. because we'd love for more people to listen. Mm-hmm. I think that's all we got. Thanks oh. for listening. Thanks oh, for making gosh, us part of your I week. I started too soon. Oh, okay. okay. I, I love, love you. Bye. bye.